Hi, and welcome back to the AI Almanac, which is a once weekly briefing of the top AI advancements or finds for the week. This week in AI, Meta launches their version of ChatGPT that is embedded into all of your social media apps. Boston Dynamic introduces all electric version of their humanoid robot Atlas. Google launches a prompting 101 guide and Microsoft's VASA 1 project. Starting off with another joke, why was the computer cold at the party? Because it left all of its windows open. <laughs> I should be better about that. First up, Meta launches Llama 3 and ChatGPT interface, even using your years of context within your social media apps to fuel it. Four days ago, Meta launched Llama 3, a new multimodal version in two sizes, 8 billion and 7 billion parameters. Its performance is being compared to smaller size models such as Gemini Pro 1.5 and Claude 3 Sonnet, allegedly outperforming both in language nuance, translation, and executing multiple tasks at the same time. It also can generate images and code like its predecessor. But the most remarkable aspect of this launch and curiously overlooked is the debut of Meta's AI assistant, including a public interface like ChatGPT at website meta.ai and the assistant has been woven into the fabric of every app in our daily use, including Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, among others. Meta virtually launched ChatGPT within all of its apps this week. It enables users to search conversation histories, ask for answers or advice, and create images. It also can curate app content, such as searching certain types of reels on Instagram, and offers users personalized recommendations. For example, if you wanna find a dinner spot for you and your friends, Meta AI Assistant will find a place that you guys will all enjoy to go to. Now, this launch reveals the fact that Meta is the first company positioned to revolutionize user interaction by leveraging individual user data to inform its AI. This isn't a traditional stateless model that we've seen in the past. It's a deep contextual engine designed to understand two decades worth of user behavior and preferences to help you execute most everything. What has been curious about Llama 3 though, since actually recording this, there have been reports that it is showing the same bias in ethnicity as we have seen in Gemini. Since Llama 3 is an open source platform and processes user data to enhance models, Meta launched Llama Guard 2 to address potential privacy and ethical concerns. This system sets up a structured deployment strategy to monitor and regulate models usage. And complementing this, CyberSec of Eval 2 introduces stricter protocols to guard against the misuse or exploitation of model restrictions, such as jailbreaking. My initial thoughts, I'm not gonna spend much time on the ethnicity bias because it's pretty much exactly the same thing that we saw in Gemini. I'm sure it'll continue to develop over the coming days. Llama 3's open source approach combined with the inherent jailbreaking risks exposes our data to an unprecedented level of threat. Free services come at the cost of privacy and consent now feels like a facade. For instance, a few days ago, I saw a tiny pop-up on Instagram linking my continued usage of the app to agreeing with Meta AI's privacy terms, yet no direct consent was given. I searched for days without ever really finding a clear idea of what I had just passively agreed to, all while the Meta AI Assistant feature had already integrated itself into my user experience without explicit approval. I did look into Meta's general privacy policy for some clues on how the data could be used, which is probably the most complicated data privacy policy I've ever read in my life, and that's probably very intentional. It was really hard to find things. It was not organized well. Some of the things I found were absolutely horrifying. The biggest one, by using Meta products, we are granting the unrestricted license of our data, photos, posts, videos, voice, etc., to use and distribute and train their models. This is a quote from them. You grant us a non-exclusive, transferable, sub-licensable, royalty-free, and worldwide license to host, use, distribute, modify, run, copy, publicly perform, or display, translate, and create derivative works of your content. This means, for example, that if you share a photo on Facebook, you give us permission to store, copy, and share it with others, such as Meta products or service providers that support these products and services. This license will end when your content is deleted from our systems. That seems like it might be a good enough safeguard, but there is another section which is quite interesting that basically says, except when it's impossible to do so which is pretty much when it's fed into any sort of AI model. It's like a black box. They're not gonna be able to retrieve that information. Once your data is in there, that means they're not gonna be able to 
pull it out, most likely, that's at least my assumption. If we can't actually delete it, uh, tough cookies. There were many other concerning pieces, such as their right to use the contents of your entire camera reel if you have enabled full access, the potential for model trainers to access your personal information, and their right to use your voice print among others. But this launch has raised my largest concern of data privacy to date. With many users now questioning the value exchange of personal data for digital services, a trend towards deactivating and deleting social apps is emerging tremendously over the last week. Without a clear option to opt out of meta AI, I'm also considering whether the benefits are worth the privacy trade-off. And my feeling is that if I continue to use social media apps, I'm actually doing it out of negligence at this point. I will end on maybe one little hopeful note. While Meta has minimal data privacy safeguards, it does introduce a measure of user control by creating the ability to erase information shared during any AI assisted chat on Messenger, Instagram, or WhatsApp. You just need to type slash reset dash AI to set it back to its default state. Advancement number two, Boston Dynamic introduces an all electric version of their humanoid robot Atlas. Boston Dynamics, a leading robotics company, has introduced a new all-electric version of Atlas, their humanoid robot. This announcement, made from the Waltham headquarters, coincided with the retirement of their previous hydraulic model of Atlas. Currently in the research and development stage, this new model is anticipated to be stronger, more agile, and more dexterous, with an increased range of motion and more practical real-world applications. Hyundai Motor Group, which actually acquired Boston Dynamics in 2021, will be the first to test the advanced robot. My initial thoughts, Boston Dynamics is the OG company in the humanoid robot race. They've been at this for decades, so while many competitors, including Figure AI and NVIDIA, continue to pop up, Boston Dynamics has notoriously been the company to aspire to. The movements of all these robots seem to be light years ahead of the other ones. At the end of the day, a humanoid's ability to execute tasks will be the determining factor of who wins this race, and Boston Dynamics stated it wants to spend more time focused on improving executing tasks, especially with the extremities. Advancement number three, Google launches a prompting 101 guide. Google has released a prompting 101 guide for Google Workspace users. This guide is designed to help users master the basics of writing effective prompts to improve productivity and efficiency when using Gemini, the AI feature integrated into Google Workspace. The guide covers foundational skills tailored to various roles and use cases, emphasizing best practices. It allows users to better collaborate with AI in real time or familiar platforms like Gmail, Google Docs, Sheets, Meet, and Slides, enhancing tasks such as writing, organizing, and visualizing data without compromising privacy or security. Don't think this will only be helpful for Google Workspace users though. It's a great guide for approaching prompting for all Gen AI environments. My initial thoughts, the prompt guide is one of the first of its kind that I've seen and really contains some helpful information relating to specific personas such as marketing, business decisions, etc. Since prompting is an art, the core foundational concepts they reference I already teach in my Udemy course, so they're not groundbreaking, but this is definitely an amazing tool to be able to copy and paste some templates to execute better prompts as a whole. Last but not least, advancement number four, Microsoft's VASA One project. Microsoft's Research Asia has developed VASA One, an AI model that can generate synchronized animated videos of people talking or singing using just a single photo and an audio track. This technology has potential applications in creating virtual avatars for video conferencing or other real-time uses, as it can operate locally without the need for live video feeds. The model, which has been trained on the VoxLeb2 dataset featuring over a million utterances from YouTube videos of 6,000 celebrities, is capable of producing high-res videos at up to 40 frames per second with minimal latency. This raises possibilities for its use in various communication platforms, as well as concerns about misuse for creating deceptive or misleading content. My initial thoughts, we've seen a lot of these image to video generation tools recently, and I think this has been one of the better ones or on par with maybe Synthesia and Hey Jen. The biggest thing I personally noticed was their lack of natural eye movement more than anything. So if you're trying to spot a deep fake, I would look at the eyes first. I'm not kidding, this has probably been my favorite week to date because I have seen for my eyes the potential of all of that user data from social media apps to be used in a way that I don't necessarily consent to. It was the moment I've 
waited for probably all of these years. And it was so fun for me to really dig into the data privacy policies and figure out kind of what's going on. Meta, if you're watching this, I still cannot find the Meta AI data privacy policy that I consented to allegedly through a pop-up on Instagram. So please make that more readily available for your users so we can understand how you're using it. Although I can pretty much figure it out that I have no control over my data. And that's it for this week. I will see you all next time.